Hello, everyone, and welcome to How Do Artists, a show that focuses on a single topic of conversation and asks the questions, how do artists live, work, play, run their businesses, stay inspired, or handle challenges and adversity from an artist's perspective? One second, we are having some technical difficulties, but... Our show will speak with a diverse group of artists and creatives as you, our listeners, have a chance to ask your questions during the Q&A segment towards the end of our show. I am your co-host, Ryan Caldwell, musician and producer, and I am joined by co-host Carlotta Pedersen, artist and illustrator, but not quite today. <laughs> Anyhow... How, are, how do artists explore nature is our conversation for today. Our guest artist is Gretchen Shepard. Gretchen's life as an outdoor photographer began when her grandmother loaned her a 1940s bellows camera to take to camp when she was 10. Her journey has gone through many iterations and continues to do so, but the desire to tell her story with photos is still at the heart. Now, as a grandmother herself, her mirrorless camera is always right by her side, her darkroom digital, and her journey to find the beauty hidden in plain sight is still in perfect focus. In recent history, she's gotten to explore the beauty of Yellowstone in the off-season and the Canadian Rockies, and also shoot some Alaskan brown bears in their natural habitat. With plans to travel to Africa in 2021, I think it's safe to say that Gretchen knows a thing or two about exploring the great <laughs> outdoors. Gretchen, did I miss anything? Uh, no. <laughs> wow, I sound pretty amazing. <laughs> Well, you definitely have an impressive resume. Um, well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's a, yeah. it's an adventure, you know? Oh, for sure. Well, and actually, that's that's a thing. So in shooting the great outdoors and adventuring, what draws you to a specific location? Oh, um, wow. It's, it can be, um, it's, so oftentimes it's first just someplace that I haven't been. And there's a lot of places yeah. I haven't been. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, going outside and getting inspired by nature or, uh, sometimes, you know, I'll hop on YouTube and watch YouTube of other photographers or that I admire, um, see things. Um, I am a big fan of, uh, explore.org who that has cameras in different locations all over the world. And you get to see well, things I'm, live. I've never heard oh, of that. that oh my awesome. gosh. <laughs> Wait, explore.org? <laughs> explore.org. I mean, they have a live bear cam up in Brooks Falls. They have elephant cams in Africa. They have, oh my gosh, every, every place all over the world, underwater, above water. Oh, and, that sounds and you, awesome. It's just like, oh, and if I can't go, I can at least do that. It's just, um, I just love going out now and, and, um, my kids are raised. They have kids. I'm retired. Um, I wish I had done this 20, 30 years ago, but I was, I, you know, I You're took doing a break. Stuff. <laughs> I, I was teaching full time and I took a break and, and that's okay that now I'm just making sure that, um, I'm gonna, that's my goal to get out. Even if it's just down the hill to the beach at a different time at different oh, places yeah. or out to the coast or wherever. There's a lot of places to explore here in the United States that I haven't gone at all. Ooh, okay. So what, what's your United States uh, bucket list for places to go oh. and explore and shoot? Um, I don't really have like a bucket list because I, I just, I feel like if I check it off, that would be done. And that's not, that's not how it works. That's yeah. not how it works. <laughs> it, it's um, because like, I think we talked, I, I've been to Yellowstone three times yeah. and, um, and I've only been to Yellowstone three times since. 2014. Mm. And I never went as a kid. And I, it, but if you ask me Mount Rainier National Park here in, in Washington State or the Washington coast, I've been there tons and tons and tons and tons of time. Right. And, and I still go back tons and tons. Of, I, I mean, I went twice in October to the coast, <laughs> but it's, it's to go back and see it again and what else and the different season, because oh yeah, these places are never the same. And so I, I've been to Yosemite. I, I want to take my husband back. He's never been, but I really, um, I, in this next, in October, we're going to be down in Moab. We're going to, my, my son-in-law is doing a 250 some odd mile crazy race. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> what? Oh, I don't know. He looks at me like, uh, you go stand in front of bears. I'm just running. And I'm like, well, yeah, but then I don't have to do anything. Cause I just get to stand. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, well, I mean, to to be fair, they could become the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, you don't want to run from a bear. That's not something you want to okay, do. Well, actually, let's let's touch on that because that's the that that's the well. I was gonna say the elephant in the room, but that's the wrong animal. Well, and those 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 are coming. Those are this summer. Yeah, that's that's coming this summer. Yeah. So, I no uh, the bears came about. Um, well, it it all. I I never thought I was gonna be like into this adventure kind of aspect yeah. and, and go out and do that type of things. But the more I went to places and saw things, I, I was attracted to animals um, and I was attracted to the wildlife or to the, the outdoors and different places. And I, I grew up with a real healthy respect of wildlife in their natural habitat. My, my grandfather would hunt, but he only hunted for food. And he taught me very young how to as a five-year-old to sit at his workbench and help him pack shotgun shells. Yeah. Not very many kids <laughs> to do that. I'm packing gunpowder into a shotgun shell <laughs> or whittling, making stuff. Or, or the oh, yeah. but, but, but then he would also take me out and we would sit for hours next to a beaver pond and wait to watch them come through oh. and to, and, and that, and my dad would do the same. It was just this really healthy kind of, awesome, amazing respect for them in their natural environment and how important they were to the environment. Uh, I mean, oh, yeah. grandpa talked to me early on about what the beaver dam would do and what it, why it was there and what it was helping with and all that kind of stuff. So, um, as I go across, I mean, there's, there's not any place I think in the United States that I wouldn't want to go. Um, I, I am completely addicted to Yellowstone. Uh, right. I've been there in October and in February and in April, and I won't go in, I probably won't go in the summer because I just, it's, it's just too many people who want to, who want to stop and don't, and think it's, it's fun to get out and, and honk their horn or tease with something, an animal that we're yeah. in their park, we're in there and, and they don't have a clue of, they haven't really, um, research to what it's going to take but i want to go to glacier i want to right yeah, right right the, i'd love to get up to canada to the great bear national rainforest up there uh Ooh. and see this oh yeah bear. some of the woods in canada is just nuts but the bears in 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 katmai which is uh katmai national park is i don't know it's like it's bigger than the state of connecticut all i know that's all i know it's huge and <laughs> there's not roads through it you you get it's a, you get dropped off in a seaplane and hike in and kind of stuff. And, um, right, right. it's, and I did not, I think it, it, it came about, um, that a photo, I went on a, a, a photo trip with a well-known photographer and he kept bugging me to come with him. And I said, finally, I said, okay. And I did not realize beforehand what the impact would be to me. And I, the first time I'm, I'm in a, like a five person plane and I'm flying over this little place and I <laughs> see these three bears down there in the river and I'm like, oh, and then we dip down and we are, land in this little tiny puddle and we have to carry our camera bags over our head with hip waders on, you know, out through the water. And then we're walking on a bear trail and they say, keep talking loud in case there's like, and then, and then you go into the river and you come around a corner and there's seven bears standing in front of you that's a lot of bears that's way more bears than most people have standing in front of <laughs> and at any given point in time and they're you you think oh my gosh somebody said you must have been free and, and i'm like i wasn't because there yes there were seven bears but there was a million salmon that the you that it was you, if you walked through the river you practically stepped on them and the bears were just trying to catch lunch yeah they were just, and they didn't really care about us as long as we didn't try to pick up a salmon. Right. They were busy. And what <laughs> I think what, what it, it, that trip made me just so in awe of wildlife and nature and what they do and how they are. I mean, and those weren't the first, the first bear I ever saw was in Yellowstone and I, my husband freaked. He, he was like, that's a bear. Get back in the car. And I'm like, it's a bear. <laughs> and i'm i'm like i'm staying right here he's way over there i'm fine and he's like get back in the car it's a bear and i'm like it's a bear and yeah so it's that healthy respect i know i i study the animal's behavior right and i sometimes have to 
temper my own excitement. So I've gotten better at that. But I still yeah, like yeah, because because you can't run up and give the bear a hug. It's no. inadv- inadvisable. No, no, <laughs> and and all of those animals are there. When when you go into a national park, that's where they feel safe and that's their home. And oh, yeah. you know, so the preparation to do. I mean, if you really want to have a super experience when you go to one of these places. Yeah. Don't just walk, go and expect everything to be good because first off you have, you really have to research. You have to research the weather because in some of those places it's changed on a dime. Like, Oh yeah. You you might wake up to six inches of snow and 14 degrees and two hours later it's 40 degrees. Oh And then, and then you think it's fine. And then an hour and a half later it's snowing again. Oh, and especially when you're, Especially with the mountains. Mountains oh, yeah. are just so unpredictable like that. And and you have that type of thing. Uh, you you need to, if you're going to the coast, you need to check for tides. If you're going to go to the beach, oh, you yeah. think what the weather's going to be. There's all kinds of research that you can do to look for it. But I think one of the, yeah. So that's, there's, <laughs> there's not a place in the United States that I don't want to go. But uh, when I head to the national parks, practically the first thing I do is, find an educational group that's yeah. the, the official educational group associated with the park and read like, all the stuff they got uh, yeah like yellowstone yeah. has yellowstone forever and they're a nonprofit. Okay. Edu- and so when i went to go see the wolves i went on a winter wolf expedition Ooh. we we went on their expedition so that i could get a, a, a channel and it was minus 22 degrees and they let you know what you're supposed to bring and everything and they, they handle a whole lot of stuff Oh man, that sounds it, brutal. It was. But if I had, <laughs> if I had to handle that myself, I would yeah. not have gotten the same thing. And the other thing that people oftentimes don't do is just pick up the phone and call the park. Call the park rangers. They Wait, you can sim- do that? Oh yeah. They have phones? Yeah. yeah they have <laughs> yeah, but they you won't you oftentimes will not get cell service when you're in the park. So Ooh. don't expect to be able to always get the app or everything. Right. But literally I, I think one of the things that oftentimes we don't do now is just if we're going someplace, whether it's to a park out in the outdoors or to a town or a city that you've never been, is to actually just talk to the people who live there or who are there. Call the Chamber of Commerce. Heck, you know, <laughs> find out if it's going to be OK to come at this time of year for that, because what's going on, you know, you never know. And so. No, that, that's huge. Well, and also yeah. I want to do a quick, I want to do a quick shout out to our, uh, to any of our viewers right now. If you feel like going and commenting and talking to us, uh, Gretchen is also open to, uh, to questions. We will go over those later in the show. If you guys have any, Yeah. but sure. okay. So, so what's, what's a, cause, cause it seems like you're not really offended by the cold. Like you'll go and shoot anywhere, anywhere. Basically, so, yeah. <laughs> well, what, what, what about like heat? So I, uh, Africa is going to be riddled with that, and that's going to be a whole thing. But so I grew up in Eastern Washington, and so here's one of the, this is the, a research thing. I've had friends come from Florida and yeah. New Jersey out here, and so and and go, wow, this is not where I thought it was going to be like. Because everybody thinks Washington State, they think Seattle, and they think oh, rain. Yeah. Of course, okay, that's a sliver of the state yeah. that that's on the uh on the west side of the cascade range okay mm-hmm. the mountains you go to the east side eastern washington yeah. it's a desert oh <laughs> it is. it's a desert it gets huh. it's it's very little and it has four distinct seasons i grew up in eastern washington i grew up in my dad yelling at me get up early. You got to put chains on your car. Cause I got to plow the driveway for you to go to school. I'm like, Oh, okay, dad. And then in the summer it would be, Oh my God, it's 101 and it's hot. And you know, like this. And then at four o'clock, the wind would come up and it would drop to maybe 90, but right. you have four very distinct seasons here in Western Washington. We kind of have two, <laughs> <laughs> but to get across the state, you have to cross the pass. And sometimes that pass is not passable there's passes and you have to, so people are, are really, you know, to be aware of that. So I'm yeah. not afraid of, of the cold and the sun, the heat, I will be ready for it. Um, I'm expecting it. You just have to stay super hydrated. Um, I, I kind of truth be known, most photographers, uh, prefer the, um, 
fall, winter, and spring rather than summer because the days are shorter. We don't oh. have to get up so freaking early for the sunrise. <laughs> <laughs> or have that, to is, that is a thing. Seriously, around here, I mean, in the middle of the summer, yeah. it's like sunrise is at five o'clock and in the morning and to get someplace or, you know, like that. And then sunset doesn't, set, it doesn't set till 10. There's oh. a, you know, there's a here now in the winter, it's like, Oh, sun rose at nine. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can make that. The sun's and, only vaguely up at nine. <laughs> yeah. And, and so it's, it's a, uh, it's kind of a funny thing because a lot of photographers like, yeah. Wait, are you saying photographers are like, they can be a little lazy? No, we just, it's, it, we're not really lazy. It's just that summer in, I, I commend those photographers that are out there doing stuff really early in the summer, but it's like, oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. But, or like the, then, uh, was it like, like wildlife, like, uh, especially bird photographers and stuff like that, trying to get them right first thing. Oh yeah. And that's, oh, man. yeah, yeah. That's, you know, birds, I, I, I will go to the, the range where they, the, the reserves, there's one not far from where I live and to see and, and and see them um i i that's that's something i, I you know what was it my friend said he says he didn't he didn't go places where there weren't animals that could eat him <laughs> the only only places with animals that can eat you okay okay and i'm like that's a really good idea that's a good way to think of it i mean it's just i i don't know something about uh that but i I well, just like, okay, so, so what, what are we, what are we qualifying as animals that could eat something? Because <laughs> I, like, I think most animals could technically, like if you get enough chihuahuas. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I suppose. No, it's just, it, it's just, uh, that are, that are not that. Yeah. I, I don't know. Um, like, like basically the more, the more, the most exotic feeling biomes kind of. Yeah. 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 But that's, that's his idea. But mine, I mean, one of my, my places I really want to go is I want to go to Scotland. Ooh, and I want okay. to go to the Isla Sky and I want to go up to the Outer Hebrides. Now that's that's then, crazy, windy, nuts. And but there is the before I go, I'm not just gonna hop in and go. That's a place that there's a couple of tour groups or photographers that have organizations that are out there. There's some people that do one online that they they're amazing. And I would it would be silly of me to think I could go there and get the benefits of a photography trip like that without calling on an expert, without right. using the locals. So that's a place I'll go. Like when I go to Africa, yeah. I'm not just going off <laughs> on my own. Yeah, she's going to wing it. <laughs> I'm going with somebody that's very experienced and has gone multiple, multiple times. And, right. um, but when I go to the Oregon coast next week, I, I have, traveled the Oregon coast at least up and down at least seven times, um, shooting different things. And I'm the place I'm going, we're, we're going to go is not one that I it's one I've been to, but it's not one that I've actually gone out on these places to, to photograph, but yeah, I researched it and I've watched all of one of several photographers videos on how they do where, where they're going. And it's, it'll, it'll be a few hour drive, but maybe three, four hour drive for me. So I can always go back. It's not a big deal. Oh yeah. But, and that's the thing is that I have to go into it with the mindset of, I can go back to this really easily. Yeah. Africa. Hard to a, go back to real easily. It's, it's a, it's a different kind of plan. And not so a, kind of a pain in the butt, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's just, you know, my, my sisters always say, say, is she going to come back? Oh no. <laughs> is she, is she going to come back? Really? <laughs> You might just stay. <laughs> what would happen, you know? <laughs> but, I mean, hey, South Africa, it's <laughs> um, yeah, it'll, it'll be, we're, I'll be in Botswana and right. South Africa and then I'll also be in Namibia. So it'll be Man. I, I, I'm, I'm starting to it's like every, every time someone starts talking about like getting a little lower than surface level like american geography i'm like oh man i feel like the public school system did not do me many favors <laughs> geography was my big thing i loved i i loved as a kid i was just and, and i think that was another thing that my my dad was a um he he loved to go he would like can we go someplace let's just get in the car and go road trip Nice. Right. You know, and with four little girls, 
he was very tolerant <laughs> um, <laughs> and we would go and we would go up it. I mean, we would, we would take forest service roads. My poor, husband, my poor husband did not grow up like this. And I will say, let's go turn, go up there. That's he goes, where does it go? And I'm like, I don't know. It's forest service road. It'll, it, it'll go someplace, <laughs> you know? And he's like, are you serious? And, and I'm like, yeah, and, um, you know, he'll draw That's the, the line. worst that happens. Yeah. yeah well, <laughs> trust me I've been oh, no. pretty crazy ones <laughs> but but there's there's places to explore that are just kind of fun to do and dad dad would do that he would just let's go but when we would go on trips as a family they would hand me a, a road map to follow to watch along where we were going so I could draw along oh. and figure out where we were coming and how far it was till we were going and this is as a little five and six and seven year old kid just mainly to keep me occupied. <laughs> <laughs> so you wouldn't be bouncing off the walls. Yeah. You know, we had one of those yeah, cool old station wagons that had the back seat that went backwards. So you got to oh. see it. So it was a three seater. And then there was a middle part in between the middle seat in the back that they would put stuff in. My sisters usually put me in there, <laughs> you know, so it was, it made a great bed. You could put blankets in there. This was before seatbelts and all that crap. Oh, so. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I, am, I, am. I, so, I, I was, I was privy to many a road trip when I was younger. And oh it, yeah. And I, I very, and both my parents were saying, oh man, if only we could have one of those old station wagons before seatbelts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I was, was, I couldn't lay down in the minivan cause that was yeah. unsafe. And I would go oh. flying out the window if we hit something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I flew out of enough back seats of Jeeps in my, in my, in my, as a kid. So, that was, <laughs> tie her in. She's flying out the back again. <laughs> you know, and we're, you know, it was the, the riding in the back of pickups. That was what we did. Yeah. We, well, and that's one know. way to bolster your concussion count, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to, we're, we're not going to do any more. We do not need an even dozen here. That was like, Mom says, we are not going those places. I'm like, I know, I know. So, <laughs> It'll be fun. It's just, it's just, I think it's a, a sense of just getting out there because there's so much to see. And, oh, yeah. and uh, we, people will go to zoos and they will see an animal and they'll, they'll think, oh, how cool. But it, to see, to see an elk in a zoo is one thing. To have it walk by your car at Yellowstone and realize yeah. that you're sitting in the car in an SUV and the sucker's head is above your above you. That's how big they are. And they're just wandering along like hi. <laughs> and they're <laughs> enormous. And they're so beautiful. And uh all oh, the man. different kind of thing. I, I haven't seen anywhere near enough wildlife yet. Okay, well, actually, that's that's a better thing for the bucket list. So, what what are instead of places you want to go, animals that you need to see in the wild? Oh my gosh! Because uh, I know you're uh, a bear fan. You're you're a, a fan, fan of the bears. Um, okay. I would I would <laughs> love to see a black leopard. Oh they, yeah, when they're in. Oh yeah, in I just the saw. Amazon. They're in yeah. the Amazon. Yeah, so that's. No, I just saw an article about because uh, oh. I didn't. I guess I didn't realize that there are, there are black leopards, black yeah. um, like black leopards and black jaguars. Yes, yes. I did not. I, I for one reason I thought it's like panthers are just one of one of those, yeah. but it's they so, just there are black cats everywhere. That's <laughs> that's a big thing of mine. My um my dad's older sister, my aunt, was a uh, she loved the outdoors and she loved um she was would go for orchids okay so oh, you think so. where yeah. orchids grow on the trees in the amazon so yeah. literally i think she was like <clears throat> in her 80s and it was it, it was like african queen type movie type thing little tiny boat going up the amazon oh, and yeah. there's there's my Annie Florence going up to look for orchids and there's all this kind of, she had pictures she took and I'm like, yes. And then she came back and told me all about it. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. But <laughs> yeah. So a black leopard pan panther, that type oh, of thing. Yeah. Yes. Would be right up there. Uh, the ones I'll see in Africa, I'm expect I'm going for elephants, but it, there's, ex I'm expected to see lions and cheetahs and leopards and rhinos and the whole thing. Um, the birds will be absolutely amazing. Um, what other animals did I, I don't like snakes. No, really? I find that really surprising. 
I mean, you, you <laughs> seem so you seem so oh, fearless. All right. Um, Eastern Washington in the hills is very dry. Yeah. Rattlesnakes. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, so, so I, I have, my uh, grandfather, when I was six, I was sitting in my grandma's rocking chair and I was yeah. probably about five or six and I'd fallen asleep in the sunshine. And I, I mean, this is how vivid a memory it is. I can feel, I can remember how warm the sun was and I drifted off and grandpa walks up to me and he takes it in his hand and he had a, a rattle from a rattlesnake in his hand and he just shook it next to my ear. That I, I, I swear it's, it's in there. I hate him. We had, we had the snake guy come to our school when oh, I was teaching. No. <laughs> yeah, and, and so here I'm teaching first grade at the one time, you know, not a real good teacher scrambles over the top of her first graders to get behind them and put them between them between her and the snake when they, when he did drops the microphone into the rattlesnakes bin. And I'm like, ah, you know, <laughs> Yeah, they're all like going, good job, Mrs. Shepard. You just go. I'm like, no, snakes, I I just, ah. Uh, well, and so, it, it, but it, it's it's funny because yeah. I actually, I had kind of the opposite experience. I have uh, I have a lot of family down in Arizona. Oh. And um, one of my, one, one of my uncles down there is a herp herpetologist. Oh, cool. Yeah. And so it's, um, so, but I got very familiar with, you know, like just the snakes around there and the reptiles and the rattlesnake stuff. But as a kid, it was all introduced to me very, very like is a, well, here's the desert and here's all the cool things in the desert. And look, they yeah. have funny, they have funny lizards and uh, snakes and stuff. Yeah. And I also think, I think snakes are kind of cute. They have like the little flicky tongue and the little beady eyes, you know, spiders. <laughs> no way I can touch it. No, no spiders, no spiders at all. Never. Oh, see, um, spiders don't bother me. That's weird. Oh, no. it's the strangest yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. My, my youngest daughter it w it was always into all kinds of animals. So she would, uh, she wanted to see, figure out spiders. So what we would do is we would scoop one up into like a plastic bucket or a plastic bag yeah, and then put it in the freezer oh. for like 15 minutes. So, so if you put it in the freezer for, okay, this is elementary science teacher. <laughs> you put it in the freezer <laughs> oh, no, for like go. this is great. Yeah. 15 minutes or so it goes into like a stasis. So it does, it, it goes oh. into like a hibernation. So it, it shuts kind of down. So, but what then you can do is you can take it out and put it under a microscope oh. or, or something. And then, and it comes out of it slowly. So you, when Bryn was little, she would just like, oh, so we would do that. And then she would be able to look at it and see it come out and start moving and stuff. Yeah. So she got to see, she thought that was big fun. She'd do that. All kinds of bugs kind of upset my husband when we would forget about him. <laughs> he'd, go, he'd go to get something out for dinner and there he'd open this thing and goes, what's in here? Like, ah, <laughs> Oh man. Actually, that was, one of the worst ones I had with spiders was when I was a kid, I had woken up in the middle of the night and I had turned on my light by my bed. And you know, I was in Arizona, you know, uh, visiting my grandparents there and, I turned on the light and there was a big old wolf spider the size of my fist at the time, just right over my bed. Those, those, <laughs> it was like, yeah, that would not be fun. I, I mean, they don't freak me. I don't like them in the house. I don't like them around, but I don't, <laughs> I mean, if, a, if a snake, a, snakes, I'm just, oh, I just, <laughs> they're nothing. So snakes, the no yeah. thing. Um, um, I, yeah, I'd love to get down to the Falklands and see, the penguins. I don't know if that's going to oh, happen. Yeah. Yes, that kind of stuff. Um, penguins are great. Actually, what about the Galapagos? Um, I, I, with a friend of mine, um, went and, and um, several friends have been, I, I have some interest there. I don't know whether it's so much the animals there or the culture of the mm. Galapagos and the whole, all that area, um, type of things to photograph. There's just so many beautiful things. Uh, so it, for me, it's, it's not just the, the animals themselves, it's the environment and yeah. how the environment what looks and the, and the things. And it's really all, unique. It, yeah, it's, oh, yeah, it is. Um, I, it, I have, a I mean, I live in the Northwest. I, I can, it's one of the most, I think one of the most beautiful places around. Um, oh, yeah. we have literally Mount Rainier. I, I, I can go down around the corner and, as there's a spot where I can see Mount Rainier. If it's a really clear day, mm -hmm. I can see Mount Rainier. I can see Mount St. Helens. I can see Mount Adams and I can look up and see Mount Baker. And that's, that's, you know, giant mountains in the cascade range. And they're, you know, it's, it's beautiful to see. And then uh, literally a two hour drive from me, I'm on the Washington coast, which <clears throat> um, it's, nice. 
it's the Olympic National Park is is stunning. And a lot of people don't realize that we have a rainforest in the Olympic National Park, the whole mm-hmm. rainforest. And so they get over 200 inches of re- rain a year up there. I mean, how many people have rainforests in their backyard? I do. <laughs> I have two I have in the Olympics. And then there's one at Rainier National Park. Oh, and especially there's- those. Like the Pacific Northwest oh, um, yeah, yeah. rainforest stuff is true. I went to Vancouver when I was young, when I was in middle school, and that was it was like we got to go and hike around some of those giant pine forests up there. Oh yeah, it's nuts! Oh. Saw my first banana slug, and I freaked out. It's like, <laughs> what the heck is th- they make them that big? <laughs> oh god, yeah, They're, banana slugs are. Or just something else. It's but it's, it's, pretty- it's one of those things. Like in other other parts of the country, you don't even know that exists. Yeah, yeah, and it's, gl- <clears throat> it's glossed over in the books. <laughs> it is, it is, and and uh, Vancouver is British Columbia is beautiful, but then Vancouver Island is where oh, I grew yeah. up going to going on vacation as a kid every year, oh, and um, I have there's a there's places I want to go up there where the orcas gather, um, and there's a rubbing beach up there that they come in and they rub the barnacles off their belly. And they come right up to the yeah they oh, that's <laughs> and cool. they come right up to the edge of the water like you can be standing right here and an orca will go vroom, right by you, and it's like okay I'm gonna go I like <laughs> hi guys <laughs> yeah so it's it's just there's so much I have I all these things to see it's just that I know that when I um I can't always go with the expectation of I'm going to get this shot or I'm going right. to get this type of thing <clears throat> I'm gonna go and experience the whole thing and I might have to go back. Yeah. Uh, but places I can't go back, I'll plan and I'll see how it goes. And I'm going to get close ups as close as I can. And I'm going to wide angles and long, all the different kind of things oh, yeah. that I can do. But I'm also going to just really soak in not only the wildlife and the nature, but the culture of wherever I am. There's a oh, yeah. lot of places like people that oftentimes come up here to the Pacific Northwest. Um, can't right now because of the things that are shut down, but uh, uh, the Olympic National uh, Park, there are eight tribes that surround the park, eight Mm. different tribes. And the culture within the Pacific Northwest Native American community is just fabulous. And it's it's something to completely absorb and their art and to go into places that have that and to see what's there. And, um, you know, that's always a favorite thing. If I'm going to go to a new town or a new place is to not only go out into the nature, but to hit a museum or an art gallery or someplace and see what the locals have, have there and what's to offer it. It just makes, a we have to moment. do it. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Expanding your cultural horizons. Well, yeah. and, but I liked what you were saying before about the, uh, like kind of the expectation you go into it with, because it's really easy to go into things with toxic expectations mm-hmm. basically. And, and kind of, I guess, ruining it for yourself if you don't get something, yes. but if you go into it with a very like open creative mindset of, I'm just going to go there and I'm going to do my due diligence on the front end, but you know, I'm just there to go and take pictures and see what I can see. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah and it's, it's there's no guarantee you're when you're going into the wilderness, there's no guarantee about weather, about animals. Uh, people always, you know, you'll see people that, that you'll, they'll see this, uh, they've gotten a picture of, a, of wolves and they're like, Oh, somebody's like, Oh man, you were so lucky to get that. Well, <laughs> well, one of the guys I know that has great wolf pictures that I I've met, he has been to Yellowstone at least two or three times a year in the oh, winter wow. for the past 12 years. Okay, that's wow. not luck. That's determination. Yeah. <laughs> you, that, you, that's just, that's probability you, at a certain point. And, and, and <laughs> it's my, my, another good friend who went. Uh, they said that we had, you know, some. We were out on the road and we were on the tour, and the wolf happened to walk and go. And that that sometimes it is. But how many times do you have to go back? And yeah. you also have to know where and how. It's if somebody goes, I'm going to go to Yellowstone in the winter to see the wolves. Yeah, I saw them on a scope three miles away or two miles away. <laughs> and and I knew, and you have to, and but if I hadn't been with the Winter Wolf Expedition, I wouldn't have known how to look for the trails. And right. now that I've done that and with them, I can go back on my own on a time where I can look for it and know what to look for and know where to be. But I also know what it takes to get to certain places in some of these 
uh, parks that, you know, people will go to a park and they'll think, oh, it's going to be open. I, it's, it's spring vacation. I'll go to Yellowstone and it'll be open. <laughs> No, the North Road will be open, but the yeah. rest of the park is still snowed in until right. mid-May and maybe later. But um, it's it's kind of funny to to um, yeah. So I don't go with that kind of expectation of right. I'm going to get it, if I if I I didn't get a good wolf picture last time. Okay, I'm I'll I'll go back again there. They're an animal that I would like to, they're up there on my list of ones I would love to see a lot closer than I got to see them. Yes, it was very cool to see them in a scope and through my lens at about two miles away on a kill and um, coming back and all that. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah, <laughs> that was something to see. And um, they're just they're just an amazing, amazing animal. And, um, so there's more, I I'd like to get a better picture uh, photo of a moose sometimes, but. Oh yeah. Moose are fantastic. But, but <clears throat> I'm dangerous. far more afraid of a moose oh, than I yeah. am of a bear. Yeah. Moose, moose are like, and it's, it's the moose. weirdest thing. Cause you don't think about like moose. It's not something you think about too often, especially down here too far South of Canada, There's, but it's, yeah. they're, they're pretty, they're, it's an intimidating animal. You don't even they're, think they're as big as they are. Oh, they're huge. They're oh, absolutely man. huge. And, and they're very unpredictable from, I've read some mm. things about them on why and stuff and something about some, one studies talked about that some kind of thing that they eat affects their brains and it's the chemicals in their brains and it's kind of like, you know, sudden acid flashback or something like that. I don't know. They just, they just go crazy. They can be just as, as no problem at all. And then yeah. they'll just turn and boom. And so right. I think that's the biggest thing on the healthy respect of animals is that <laughs> I never, I never assume that, um, I'm, that they're, that that they're going to come to me or that I have a privilege right. there. I'm in their house. I'm, I'm well, not... and especially with something like a moose where it's not like an elephant because elephants think we're cute. So we uh... get a little, well, you know, they're supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no, they, that, well, well, I, I suppose they think you're cute at some point, but not, I, I don't I mean, they, or, or they think that we're cute, like how we think mice are cute, but you know, we won't hesitate to kill one in an instant, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, elephants are, are another animal uh, rhinos are one i would love to see oh, but man. they are uh, can be quite uh temperamental temperamental the and that probably the most dangerous animal in africa is the hippo oh yeah yeah it is Those it are is scary. it it's but would i love to see one would i love to photograph them absolutely absolutely and yeah we'll see what i do what, well, what happens so let's let's go into some practical advice here. okay so Okay, so when you're preparing to go and shoot, uh, so you've had you so currently you've had the most experience going and shooting up in the North Woods, right? Yes. Yeah. So, okay, so if you're gonna go and shoot in the North Woods in, let's call it, uh, you know, let's let's go deep winter. What what if you want to do some like straight deep winter, you know, negative double digit uh, <laughs> photography? How do you? So what what's what do you got to what do you got to bring? How do you take care of camera health? You wow. know, personal conditioning. Yeah. So. Um, I'm in much better condition than I was last February. <laughs> I made, made sure I, I know that with that. Um, it is, it is brutal. You have to kind of be ready to accept that it's brutal physically and on your gear. Right. Um, right. And uh, that if you, um, you need to, to read it as much as you can by people who are actually going out. I would suggest looking up different people's photographers that are out there. Uh, or the uh, Yellowstone photographers or stuff like that, that go out and or people that go out and winter shooting yeah. did, to, to really show what they do. I, I had, uh, I had a full wool sweater with, um, you know, with under uh, base layers underneath it, you, you know, they, they don't use cotton. 
No, cotton's rotten. Cotton, cotton is rotten. <laughs> cotton is the death fabric, they call it. Well, and that's the and, and that's because it goes in, it'll soak up the moisture yeah, that's coming off your so, body, and then that'll freeze. So you're <laughs> you, so you've got base layers that are smart wool or something like that, and then right, you've got right. that. And then on top of that, I had a wool vest. Mm. And then I had I'm not a wool vest, but I had a, a down vest and I had a full down coat on oh. top of that. Um, and I had um inner gloves. And outer gloves. I had hand warmers inside. I had hand warmers right. in my boots. My my because my or foot warmers in my boots because I had different layers on. And when you're photographing something, you don't are not necessarily um, moving around necessarily a whole lot. You yeah. might have to stand and wait for something to move. Oh, like no. when we were watching this one pack of wolves with through the scopes, we stood in one spot for 40 minutes. So seriously. Oh, that's not good in the cold. <laughs> reason, minus 20 years standing there. And so we're, we're switching back and forth and we're kind of trying, but it's, it's that. So, you so you're standing that. there losing heat. <laughs> yeah, you are. You, so you've got, you've got your face covered. You've got your ears covered. You've got everything oh, yeah. kind of covered on top of it. Your gear, um, you have to be really careful of going from the cold to the warm because you'll get condensation oh. Oh. on your lens on the inside of your camera and stuff like that. So I had these special bags that you can get. Uh, and they, um, I would take the lens off, take my, and I would take my SD card out and take the lens off and put it back in the thing or the camera. And if I was going from spot to spot, I would just put the whole camera and like, cause I had a big 600 lens that I borrowed. Yeah. Um, and um, that would all go in this bag. And what it did was it was kind of an insulated bag in that it kept it at a temperature that if, it, if I, since I'd been out in minus 22, it kept it, didn't let it get too warm too fast. So when right. I hopped back in the van and brought my gear in and they were, everybody was complaining that it was cold and turn on the heat. My gear could stay cold. <laughs> Right. And, and that was an important thing to do that it's that transfer from cold, hot, you'll, you'll, some photographers will leave part of their gear outside sometimes mm -hmm. if they're going like sometimes the people that are doing polar stuff and polar bears and things like that. Um, it's a whole, it's a whole, there's a whole science to it. Mm -hmm. So it's that, um, you People think that if they're in the extreme cold that they, you know, I'm too cold to drink water. Heck, you need to drink so much water. Oh, yeah. You need to drink so much water. You get so dehydrated. It is, and it's, it's just as bad as the desert. Yeah, yeah. Which is crazy to think that that's how that, but yeah, it absolutely works it, that way. It just wick it out of your skin. It is, a, it is a sort of desert in and of itself. It's just the opposite oh, yeah. from the heat to cold. So, um, because it's, it's very dry uh, mm -hmm. in Yellowstone in the winter. It's it's the snow is crystally and crunchy and it's uh, there's no moisture in it. And uh, oh, yeah. so you just you have to um, and, and you really have to be honest with yourself about your limitations, about oh. what you can handle. And sometimes people have a hard time doing that. They think, oh, I've paid for this trip. I'm going to. Yeah. And oh my gosh, you can just, you, you know, it, you'll, yeah, you do that to yourself. You're not going to be able to go on another trip for a long time, or you're not going to be able to do something else. I've no, cause I've pushed myself past that before. What's, what's the, what's the worst, the worst consequence you've had for that? Um, <laughs> cause seldom do people get this prepared by accident. <laughs> um, I, I got slammed into the sand by a sneaker wave. Oh, and I got, um, I, and it was, it, and gave me a concussion. Um, it, that was probably one of, one of the bad ones, uh, that I, I did. And it wasn't, it wasn't super cold, right. but it was, um, uh, it was, I mean, water, it, water it was powerful. Very, and, yeah. and it's, I had two cameras and I'm thinking like this, but I did not expect this wave to come up behind. And I, I had not planned for that. I now plan right. for that. Um, other things, you know, I mean, when I was like, snow skiing, we, we went, yeah, again, not enough water, got, got too cold, got, went out when it was too foggy and literally had to stand on the hill and yell 
for people because I couldn't see the end of my skis. Oh no. And my husband and we were both there and we had to holler and we could finally hear the ski patrol guys coming. We're coming for people. And what we did was we hooked, everybody just took a pole and he had hang on to it. And we had a train train of four or five of us going down the hill because it was so foggy. None of us could see the next person in front of us. Oh, wow. So it's going out in elements. It's not being really prepared for elements like that. I haven't done it necessarily so much when I have been photographing. Mm. Um, but except for the sneaker wave, <laughs> <laughs> but in other situations I've gone out and I'm like, oh, this was, this was not smart to, to get out here. So I don't, I, hmm. well, I, but you know, as, as my mama told me, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. 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 And, I mean, if, and, you, if you're not accounting, you're like, how, how could you, you know, yeah. unless, unless you just do a bunch of arbitrary research that proves to be useful, you know? And, <laughs> And you have to, like, if you've got your own car, if you're, if you're going into these places, you need to have, a, you need to think in terms of almost like worst case, right? Not that it's going to happen, but you think, okay, if I spin out and hit a, a snowbank and I have to sit in that snowbank or my car for 24 hours, which can just what, happen. Yeah. Which can happen. What's going to happen? What do I need to do? Or if I'm stuck in the woods and it's raining and stuff like that, and I can't get out and I don't know where, what can I do? what, what kind of things do I have that I need? And, and it, it seems excessive at times, but it, it, the, the, when you need it, you're going to think, whew, <laughs> that's not excessive. You know, that's not, that's like, I'm so glad I had that, that extra silver, you know, thermal oh, blanket. Yeah. And I, I had these and I had extra socks and I had extra gloves and I had, you know, what I needed. I had extra food. I had all those type of things. Oh, yeah. I had a flare. I had flares or stuff like that. So that if I'm stuck and nobody knows I'm there and something, yeah. or do I have some way to get a hold of, uh, of people or do, have I told, <laughs> have I told people I'm going someplace? That's why when, Oh, we, that's a big one. Yeah. You go into the parks they always say, register on the hike. You have to do this. They don't do it. The Seriously, my, my cousin was a park ranger at at, La, at um, Craters of the Moon. And mm. he was park superintendent there. <laughs> and trust me, Jimmy, whenever he, it wasn't about keeping track of people, of, of where I want to know how many, what's, what are you going to do? He's like, I, I need to know where people are planning on going if somebody doesn't come back. Yeah. that's kind of they're responsible and that's kind of what they need to know and oh yeah it's dangerous and, out there yeah and it's just one of those it's it's simple common sense and a lot of it and that's a lot of this <laughs> stuff is common sense which you know uh, some people think is overrated but i, I don't think so i you oh, know, yeah it's well and i think it's uh, like the other thing is that all of these measures and tools and like things you're doing to prepare for stuff it's all com it's all like basic common sense it's every day to the people who do it all the time yeah. like if you're if you're out there in it of course you have road flares of course you have sand in your truck why would you not have that and mm -hmm. not only do you have them you know how to use them because you have yeah because you use them it might just happen to you once every season if you get unlucky you know yeah. yeah, and what, that's just people, a, why do you have sand in your car? And why do you have a shovel? Uh, because <laughs> you got to get out of a snowbank and you got to put sand or, you know. Or, yeah, have you tried getting it out of a snowbank without a shovel? Doesn't work so good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's just um, cold weather doesn't bother me. I, I yeah. am prepared for it. But warm we, weather is tricky, though. We planned on it well and and plan for the whole thing. Yeah. Warm weather, when I went to Alaska to Katmai, it was in july oh. yeah it was the end of july yeah and it was it was freaking hot it I was not expected it. to be that hot it was like 70 75 degrees the poor bears were like oh they're not chasing anyone there was one, they, a bunch of them were but there were some of the bigger ones literally there was one huge bear he would sit on the edge of like the bank and he was just like this and, he, and kind of in the shade of a little bush and yeah. he'd like watch the fish go by. And then when he'd see one, he'd just like roll into the water to get it. <laughs> and, so, and another one, just, I have a picture of one. He just over here that's just sat. And he sat up in the water, up to his chin, 
all the time. And then he would just dunk his head down and try to catch fish in it. Pull back up when he got one. It, was, it wasn't because he was lazy. It was because he was so freaking hot. You know, I mean, you're, you're 650 pounds, 700 pounds, and you've got a super fur coat on and it's 75 degrees. You're not dancing in the water, you know, yeah, they're, they're not, they're not built for that sort of stuff. So uh, the heat is, uh, I think for me, uh, one of the hardest things is bugs. And, mm. and this, you know, I, 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 <laughs> when I taught school and we used to have, uh, early in my early days, teachers still had to go out and do the recess duty. I'd get burned at recess, sunburned at recess. Oh no. I'm, one of those. I'm that redheaded, fair skinned, burn at recess, burn the part in her hair on this, through the sunroof and the oh, car. Yeah. Not, oh not no, I, I, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. So I will live in sunscreen, um, you know, be it. Yeah. Whatever. Get like the, get the lead based stuff, SPF 45,000, you know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I grew up in Eastern Washington. We sprayed DDT, you know, I used oh. to water. The crop duster is coming. Let's go lay down and see. Let him crop dust us, you know. <laughs> oh gosh, the worst one with the uh, what was it? Well, but DEET, yeah, with with the DEET for bug repellent was when I was when I back way back when I was in Boy Scouts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there was a summer camp, and this kid was so deathly afraid of bugs. He sprayed DEET all over himself, and that and they had to take him to the hospital for chemical yeah. burns. Yeah, yeah. Oh man. So um, that's I think Anyhow. the sunburn. The sunburn <laughs> will be the hardest thing I think in the. Uh, there um, well, also heat, heat exhaustion too that's another yeah one. it will be it will but um in august where i will be um it will be winter oh so we're what? southern hemis their southern hemisphere so the oh, trick man. is also paying attention to that kind of stuff uh right and and, and so it'll be a bit cooler um nice. not so bad but well, that's good yeah well, right. I think, I think we are at the end of our rope. We are at the oh. end of our time slot here. So, yeah. but thank, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, thanks okay. to all of our listeners and, but, but Gretchen, here's the real question. Where can, where can our listeners find you? Like, what are they, what are they looking for? Okay. Um, well, what do you, what do you, what are you plugging? Uh, what are you promoting? So, um, <laughs> I have, um, images by Gretchen is me. Um, I, Images by Gretchen.com is my website. Nice. Um, Images by Gretchen is my tag on Instagram and on Facebook page and images with a Z is on Twitter. Um, but um, I have, a, if you like bears, I have a book on my website called um, a day in the life cat, my um, a day in the life. Um, nice. And it's, I, I set it up as um, my, when I came back, from cat mine, my grandsons were all about it. And so I made it into a kid's book, but it's also informational and it has about 20, 30 pictures of, of the bears. And, the, and so, but the bears are like talking. They're like, what? Oh. You know, and I'm into them out again. <laughs> and these two little bears, these two little cubs that got their mother sent them up to the up the top of the hill and they're sitting there like, I'm in time out again, <laughs> you know? So there's that. Um, so yeah, I, I'd love it if somebody wanted that. I also have a book of, um, abstract photography which is uh, that's that's a whole different kind of that's um kind of an urban landscape kind of kind of going into places that are um old bunkers and oh, nice. uh boat yards and finding things there because you never know know where there's absolute beauty all around so that is that is absolutely for certain well yeah thank thank you again and Thank you. On behalf of myself, Ryan Caldwell, we would like to say so long and thank you for next week. Same time, same place. Bring your questions, your curiosity, and we will see you then. Thanks.